Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, the most viewed and followed traditional Catholic apostolate worldwide. This is also home to the new crusade. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking economics. And I have brought on a very special guest indeed. His name is Greg Manorino. He also is an uh, East Coaster like myself, gr growing up there uh, in New York, myself, the Jersey Coast. So it'll be interesting to get his take on what is going on with the latest in the world of economics and finances. Now, for those of you who don't know who he is, I know many of you do, but being that this is the first time he is on our show, let us get right into it. Uh, he started his financial career working for the securities and trading arm of the now defunct Bear Stearns uh, before the dot-com bubble. Uh, he's an active trader on the capital markets. He's published several books pertaining to finance, global economics, and equity training. Trading, excuse me. Uh, most recent publication, and I'll try to get this in the description box for you, Insider Secrets, a simple, easy way to interpret stock charts for maximum profit. He's even published a, a book about casino black, uh, blackjack strategies, which is pretty interesting. Uh, holds a medical degree uh, and, and, and practice uh, medicine. He served in the United States uh, Naval Reserve Medical Service Corps, having obtained the rank of lieutenant. Again, you've seen him all over the place, interviewed by some of the best in the business, whether it's Zero Hedge, whether it's uh, Greg Hunter over there at US, USA Watchdog, Alex Jones, The Pete Santilli Show, Caravan to Midnight, which I've also been on, SG, SGT Report, amongst others. As we move along, feel free to drop uh, any websites, any of your new works. Uh, Greg, I'm just really happy that we can snag you for the next half hour as you just kind of walk us through all this madness that's go going on um, with the global elite and how they're kind of trying to play us here on the, the economic side of things. So I guess, you know, the, f the first question I have for you is, I guess it was last summer, many were many economists were indicating that something would happen uh, by the fall. That hasn't happened. Now we're kind of moving along, and it seems a lot of economists are saying, well, everything's going to tank by the end of this year. You know, what, from your perspective, where are we at? What's the latest, uh, you know, economic indicators to suggest uh, that things are, you know, either stabilizing or we're, we're, you know, headed in the wrong direction still? Well, I look at a couple of metrics specifically. Uh, one of them, and it's a big one, is the bond market or the debt market. Um, I've been talking about this for years, how important it is to not focus on what's occurring in the stock market. The stock market is an illusion consisting of, of, of many facets here. Um, and again, most people only know one thing. What is the stock market doing? And more specifically, what is the Dow Jones Industrial Average doing? What we do understand, anyone, I think, who has even the slightest clue, is the, the stock market is absolutely disconnected from reality. Um, there's, no, there's no price discovery mechanism behind any asset class at this time. Uh, and this is a point I have been stressing over and over again, especially lately because it's getting much worse. World Central Banks, again, have, uh, have created a financial Frankenstein of truly epic proportions by turning the entire financial system upside down, negative interest rates, suppressing interest rates, not allowing the free market to determine the fair value for debt. This has caused massive, and I cannot stress that word, that word more, massive. Uh, capital malinvestment uh, uh, across the spectrum. Um, again, what that really means is cash is moving into assets where it shouldn't be going and away from assets that it should be going into. So we have a major rift here, um, and we have multiple bubbles existing. Uh, we have inverse bubbles. We have it's, That is bubbles to the downside with regard to the quote-unquote risk-off trade, which would be for example, precious metals, and then we have uh, the, the stock market, which is existing in an epic bubble, which is um, being reinflated since the 2008 event on the back of a debt bubble, which is truly uh, a 
monster. Um, and all of this, what people need to understand here, this is this, in my mind here, there is no way world central banks can be that stupid. Um, they have to see and understand clearly what they have done. So if they, if, if we know that, and you know, again, I'm not the only guy, you're not the only guy, there's a lot of people out here talking about this. The Federal Reserve has to be well aware of this. And yeah. this is also uh, something else that be, needs to be understood in the context that we have a direct, and, and look, I'm not making this up here. This is the direct collusion between world central banks and their respective governments. They are, they are inflating this, this bubble here um, in the stock market, in, in the debt market, which is the greatest threat to humankind, bar none. Again, it's a resource problem. I want people to understand that. The debt bubble is not a financial issue. It's a resource problem. We're borrowing more and more from the future in greater and greater amounts just to sustain the now. What I want people to also have, to have a visual uh, perspective on this uh, it, it's, it's pretty frightening why this is the greatest threat, the debt bubble is the greatest threat to humankind, period. In the end, if you were to look at a chart of global debt over the last several decades, and you were to look at a chart next to the global population, you will see they have risen in tandem like hockey sticks next to each other. So if we understand and we can accept the fact that the global debt market is in a bubble of truly epic proportions, and we've inflated a population boom on that fact, what will happen, I mean, in the most common sense term, when that debt bubble bursts, and it will burst, it will cause a correction of population, global population, which would be truly epic. So world central banks are so desperate to keep the system going. Understand, at its core, we are dealing with a system that demands that debt be borrowed into existence in perpetuity. In perpetuity. It can never stop. That's how the system works. It's a debt-based economic model. Once we admit we can't borrow anymore, we have a debt crisis. You remember the European debt crisis? Well, it still exists, although it's much, much worse. Look, the world is engulfed right now in a debt crisis. Now, what world central banks have been doing and why a lot of people, including myself, never believed this would go on as far as it has, at least at this, up till now, is I don't think we were able to fathom how desperate they would become. Again, look at what they have done. They have turned the financial system upside down. Negative interest rates around the world. Here in the United States, debt, a debt suppression cycle, unlike anything we've ever seen in the history of the world. The financial system is not meant to function upside down. So what this tells me, again, is this is how desperate they are. Now, we can even go further. We also understand that as of today, as a matter of fact, the European Central Bank is engaging in buying corporate debt. Corporate debt. This is the next phase here, in my opinion. So we have this, this uh, quantitative easing cycle, which is uh, money being printed out of thin air to buy government debt. Now they're going to print cash out of thin air to buy corporate debt. I'll tell you what the next thing is going to be. Helicopter money. This is how desperate they're going to get. They're going to have to figure out another way to keep this propped up again. And why? Because they're not stupid. They understand that the debt problem is a resource issue. They're going to try to stretch this out as much as possible. But all they're doing, Eric, is making this much worse. The distortion is much greater. And the correction to fair value, much more extreme. So what I want people to understand here. And a lot of people are putting this into the perspective of a collapse. Well, we, what we will be experiencing is not really a quote unquote collapse, but a correction to fair value. We understand that we are existing in a multiple bubble environment. These bubbles will burst. How do we know that? It very, it's very, very simple. Look on history, look back on upon history. And I, I challenge everyone to do this. Look at every single financial and economic bubble in history, without exception, they all burst. That's the one thing that they have in common. That's how we know that these bubbles will also burst. So how much longer uh, then, Greg, can they can they sustain this? And what is like the breaking point? I mean, what are they waiting for? They're just stringing us out. I mean, what's the, the end game with us? What are, the, what are they waiting for? Well, I think we are clearly marching towards a two-tier society. 
and I've been saying this also for years. Um, the the middle class generally is unfortunately the most uninformed class of them all. Uh, they, they are being kept distracted um, by the illusion of the stock market. Um, they, they are being forced to work as, as debt slaves in many ways, not being able to focus on what's occurring. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what's going to end up happening here, unfortunately, is a complete and utter uh, uh, societal, um, I don't know how you want to put this, uh, um, rearrangement, again, to a two-tier society. The middle class will be wiped out um, in this environment here, and many will not survive. Understand, the financial, it's not just a financial problem we're facing, it's a resource issue. So the end game is simply that. And when will it occur? Again, let's look at the action of world central banks, how desperate they are. They're going to continue to do things that we can't even believe uh, to try in every way possible and in possibly impossible ways to keep this going until the very, very bitter end, until everything is in place. Again, uh, what, what do we know also about World Central Banks, no more so than the Federal Reserve? I mean, I urge everyone to just look at a long-term chart of the S&P 500. We get bubble after bubble after bubble. We had the dot-com bubble, crash, 2008, crash, where we are now, and it's going to crash. They are serial bubble blowers. This is done on purpose, to transfer wealth from one group of people to another. It will never, ever stop. So all we need to be mindful is the environment we are now existing in is not sustainable, but we also need to be mindful that world central banks, um, their desperation, in my opinion, is hitting a fever pitch. So we'll see what's next. I think what's next on the agenda here in the United States, the Federal Reserve is going to also resort to corporate debt uh, purchases, just like the ECB is doing. They're going to probably have to resort to helicopter money. Forget any kind of a rate hike coming in June, probably not July either. Um, and again, all we need to know is, is two things. And this has been my, my, uh, my theme since day one. Bet against this debt. Understand it's not sustainable. You bet against the debt by holding a hard asset, getting out of their system, hold units of wealth. That is gold and silver. My favorite is silver. Um, and then uh, understanding you need to become your own central bank. That means, again, give them back their, their paper products, which don't even belong to us, Eric. Look, most people don't understand that the bills that are in your pocket, they're not yours. They're not mine. They're not, these belong to the respective central bank. Yeah. And they, but not only that, they're owed back to the recep, respective central bank plus interest that they print out of thin air. Do you want to be in a system like that? Absolutely not. So yeah. bet against it and understand where we are. We have inverse bubbles and we have uh, bubbles to the upside. So we need to understand where we need to be in these spots moving forward. It's pretty simple. Once again, I have with me Gregory Manorino. You can find him at traderschoice.net. Also go to his Twitter page, at Greg Manorino. Uh, one of the articles that you had uh, tweeted, I took a look at this morning, kind of interesting. Fund, fund managers fear central banks will create the next layman moment. Apparently there was a get-together over there in Berlin called the Fund Forum. And a lot of these uh, fund managers are really – Fearing a repeat, what what can you say on that? I, I know you talked about this with Greg Hunter a little bit, but the you know the next layman moment, if you will, that's that's coming down the pike. Absolutely, look, the this environment again that is, has been created here by runaway central banks has um, has fostered this distortions that are so extreme that this, again, will correct to fair value. And these, these fund managers are not stupid. They understand where this is going. These valuations are in bubble territory. Um, it doesn't mean it's not going to go on a little bit further. I think it will. Again, why central banks are not done. They are so scared and so desperate to keep this propped up. So when you've got people like you know fund managers who understand dynamics of this market, lots of other guys out here saying the same thing. Look, even on the mainstream, they're starting to start to question each other, saying, hold on, no, what's going on? Look, the market is not real. There's nothing real about it here. Um, and when, when you sit there and you listen to the mainstream financial uh, professionals, quote unquote, uh, talking about this market as if it's real, um, then you know you're listening to someone who has no 
have no idea what they're what they're talking about. Yeah. How could any asset whatsoever the, its price be real if we understand that the world central banks are deliberately suppressing the debt market? It, it, nothing nothing can <laughs> can have a price discovery mechanism behind it. Again, everything prices are of what's happening in the bond market is the largest part of the market. This is why well central banks have chosen to affect that part of the market. But now, now they're getting into the markets themselves and buying corporate debt. This is the next phase, in my opinion. And I, and I think this is going to play out here in the United States as well. How far is that going to go? I don't know. Um, but I believe they're going to try everything they can to keep it propped up till after the presidential election cycle is over. So that means we can expect more distortions moving forward. Will this correct before that point? It might. Yeah. Um, but this is what they're going to try to do. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Greg. It seems across the board we're living kind of in an Alice in Wonderland, whether it's on the economic side. Take a look at our puppet government, even from, from our perspective, a traditional Catholic perspective, what's coming out of the Vatican, a lot of baloney. It's, it's what is real anymore. It seems truth have become lies. Lies are now truth. Can't trust mainstream media. People are looking for, for good quality information uh you know via alternative uh news sites and that, that's why we try to bring people like you on certainly don't trust the mainstream media myself but if i can get two takes from you on this that people have been asking you know what's the latest on oil how, how does that relate to everything we're talking about and how will a potential war i think everyone can kind of see how we're we're building towards uh a global war which will make world war ii look uh you know it will pale in comparison compared to World War II. But how will that affect, um, you know, with Middle East uh, incursions over there? How's that going to affect uh, gas prices over here? You know, once oil prices uh, become more volatile, and then also gold. You know, there's a lot of talk about gold. Help, help my people uh, make sense of, you know, should we be buying into this the, the gold that's being pushed now? Uh, you know, help us make a little sense in those two areas, uh, oil and gold. Sure. Well, first of all, the, the goal here, well, the goal, if you want to put it that way, is war. Um, understand why. Why is war going to occur out of all this? Again, resources, Eric. This is why I am trying to warn people why, how desperate the situation is and why this debt problem is not a financial issue. It's a resource problem. War is going to come about as there is a scramble for resources around the world. This is what's going to happen. There's no doubt about it. We've seen it before. Now, crude oil. Let's look at what they did to crude oil. It's absolutely unbelievable. Now, if you recall, we had uh, crude oil early in the year, bottom out about $28 a barrel, something around it. I had said publicly and on interviews I did, they would not allow it to go lower. Why? Because institutions... Banks are leveraged to what happens in with, with regard to crude oil to, to an extreme. They had to create an environment where they would push crude oil higher, and that would pull the stock market higher. So what they initially did, it's, it's unbelievable. They started to, the mainstream started, started to introduce the prospect that there may be some type of a production cut with regard to OPEC. I said publicly the moment it came out, it was not going to happen. They were not going to cut it. It was just a prop that was thrown out there to allow speculation, speculation only in the market to pull crude oil higher, and that's exactly what it did. When that started to top out, we had this... <laughs> This Canadian wildfire. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Just all of a sudden pop up over there at the absolute opportune time. Look, what I'm, <laughs> what I'm not what I'm trying to say, what I am saying is this was a deliberate act to put another floor under crude oil. What happened the day after the fire? We had the Saudi oil minister ousted. What did that do? Put another bottom under crude oil. Look, and what happened through all of this? The stock market went up and up and up so they will do things again this goes back to what i was saying before that we cannot even believe that are so far out of the realm of what people would consider reality that it's you know you, you'd be labeled as conspiracy theorists yeah. but all you need to have is one and i mean one functioning brain cell to be able to put this together and understand where this is going they're not done and there's, there's no doubt that war is the goal now with regard to gold this is where people need to be gold and more specifically silver and i will I, i'm going to repeat myself the millionth time 
Silver, physical silver is the most undervalued asset, in my professional opinion, in the history of the world. Um, this is why I've been buying this for years and years. I will continue to buy it for years and years until this whole thing explodes. Look, we're in a, we exist in an environment where world central banks are forcing risk. In other words, forcing people to inflate the stock market, causing capital misallocations and malinvestments, period. So if we understand that, we got to look at the opposite side of the spectrum to look where, for where the deals are. And the deals are, again, in these inverse bubbles. What's going to end up happening here, Eric, and it's a very simple scenario to understand. We all know this, and I would believe you would agree with me, and probably 99.9% .9 of your listeners will agree that we are now existing in th this, this global debt bubble, which will correct the fair value. What does that mean? This interest rate suppression cycle and these, these, the fact that the world central banks have flipped this upside down cannot last. So at one point here, we're going to have rising interest rates as people run for the hills to get out of a market which is not sustainable. The debt market is not sustainable. Now, will that, will that happen this summer, you think? I'm not sure when it's going to happen, but I can tell you this. When it does happen, we're going to see, we're going to see bond yields spike rapidly. We're going to see cash leaving the bond market, which is going to put massive amounts of pressure on the stock market, which will sell off rapidly. And all of this cash is simply going to look for a place to go. And it's going to look at those inverse bowls. That's where it's going to go. So um, it, it's just a very easy, simple scenario to understand how this will play out over time. When, again, it's very difficult to put a, a, a handle on it. Because yeah. no one thought, not even myself, that it would go this far. But we, ne we never understood how desperate world central banks would get. No one knew yeah. that world central banks would, would flip the system upside down and go negative. Yeah. Uh, no one would ever have imagined that governments would start buying corporate debt like they're doing now. This just started in, in European Central Bank. No one will believe that the Federal Reserve will resort to this, which I think they will. No one would believe they're going to start dumping cash out of helicopters into people's hands again to keep the system propped up. It's not going to work. We're going to face a hyperinflationary depression unlike the world has ever seen before. Wow. And, and, mo and many, many people are not going to survive. Yeah, and as you mentioned too, I listened to several of your other talks uh, recently. You know, they're starting to get criminal, even, which is frightening. I mean, wh where do they stop with that? But for my, you know, the everyday listener, Greg, you know, what is the everyday person? Obviously, we don't have skills like you do in terms of being able to trade on a daily basis. Um, that's one thing I actually like about you is you, you're preaching, you know, transition into tangible assets, which I have been preaching now for a while. I think all of us can see this. However, you want to label it, crash. You know, just the bottoming out of, of 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 the stock market, and basically will end up like another Venezuela, or, yeah. or Greece, or Puerto Rico. You know, what can you tell the, the every everyday person? Get out of the stock market. What will the you know savings accounts look like? What will the four hundred one ks look like? I mean, were they going to freeze our ATMs? I mean, what's going to happen like they did over there in one of those smaller countries? Actually, free, free you know froze the uh, ATMs. What is this going to look like? Well, again. Um... The middle class is going to be caught completely off guard here, uh, like in 2008, and they're going to hold on to these things. Um, their 401ks are going to be absolutely devastated. Their, their investments on the long end of this market, meaning uh, investments that only profit from the market going higher, will be destroyed, and simply that wealth will be legally stolen and taken and placed into other people's pockets. Um, this is the way this always goes. We've seen it time and time again. This is going to be, no, well, not no different, but much, much worse. Again, why? These distortions are much, much worse. We've never seen this before. So what the average person needs to do is just understand they need to bet against the debt. They need to become their own central bank. That means hoarding hard assets. Now, I'm not saying you have to take everything out of your account. Yeah, and you, you shouldn't even be thinking along those lines. Um, what, what I'm saying is people need to be Acquiring hard assets, just like you just said, betting against the debt means holding units of wealth, not debt units. Like a bill is a debt unit. It, that's all it is. Um, so give the world central banks back their products of debt and use them to acquire units of wealth. Um, that's the only way I can really put it into perspective, and I've been trying to say that for years. I think we're getting through our message, you know, your message, my message. A lot of people out here who understand the dynamics of what is occurring, People are starting to listen. Uh, I wish more would. Yeah. Unfortunately, most won't. Well, that's why we need to keep having you back on, Greg. We, this is, you know, people aren't prepared for this, really on all levels, I think. 
And, uh, you know, it, it's quite frightening to see people just kind of blow this off as if, you know, you know, having the ideology of just, you know, waking up, if I can make it through the day, no preparedness at all. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, my next question is this concerning um, unemployment numbers. I think the latest are 4.7. I think some of us would argue maybe that's a little bit of an undersell. I mean, I don't know. You can feel free to argue against that. But then we see jobs growth in, in May, slowest in five years. I think temporary workers uh, was recently reported that that's on the decline, too. I mean, in that area, that doesn't seem to be too promising either. <laughs> Look, um, they can twist these numbers and spend them any way they want. Every single month, we have waves of people leaving the workforce here. We have a labor force participation rate at a historic low right now. Historic low. More people out of the workforce than ever in history. Uh, we have more Americans on public assistance than ever in history. Uh, Obama has a, a, has has really um, made made history in that we haven't seen what he has achieved in over 80 years. That is a sub 3% economic growth for a, a president's entire tenure. We haven't seen this since Herbert Hoover. I call him Hoover Obama because of that. Um, look, the real numbers with regard to unemployment are probably four times higher than what they're telling us. Uh, maybe more than that. We are at great depression levels. Again, people leave the workforce, they're not counted anymore. It's like they just don't exist. Um, this is how the, they fake these numbers. Um, and again, it's just to show. People say, hey, you know, unemployment's only 4.7. Really? How about if we started counting the people who stopped looking for work? Uh, how about we, we talk about the fact that not only do we have a labor force participation rate at, at a historic low, we have something called money velocity at a historic low. Money velocity is the rate at which cash is moving through an economy. You cannot have, look, I, I can't stress this enough. You cannot have any kind of an economic recovery without cash moving through an economy. We, have, it's, we haven't seen this. It's, it's, it's historic. So when you hear again the mainstream trying to tell you that we're in some type of an economic recovery, you know, either they're directly lying to you or, or something else is going on. And we are not in an economic recovery at whatsoever. whatsoever. Uh, and the illusion of the stock market makes people believe that we are, but we're not. So, again, we have this paradox of, 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 of a, a global economic slowdown, and the United States is not immune to this. We have all these metrics that we just spoke about, and yet the stock market is very close to all-time record highs. Very interesting, wouldn't you say? Absolutely interesting. One of the things I, I love about you, too, is you know, you're know you going to comment in more general terms, you know, current state of the, the U.S. And I was taking a look at your Twitter this morning. You had a great tweet on uh, you know the whole... Uh, socialist uh, equality propaganda. Here you had Hillary Clinton in a 12K uh, Armani jacket preaching, you know, everything's all, you know, inequality. In and it's just, for those of you who are not used to us from the East Coast, we're going to shove that sarcasm uh, in your face. But uh, yeah, really interesting how this whole, you know, sharing, we're even hearing it from the Vatican now, sharing, we got to share this, we got to share that legitimate redistribution. I mean, it's nothing more than socialism. Uh, that's basically the end game of the the NWO. Uh, but you know, what was your take recently? Kind of raised my eyebrows a little bit that even Obama and Greenspan came out and was warning the USA. You know, you better you know prepare, start preparing now. I mean, even even these guys who are in on the game, it seems like, are coming out and saying, you know, hey America, you better start preparing for the worst. Absolutely, and I think people like Greenspan, people like Icon, or uh, people like. Um, I mean, there's so many right now of uh, the main mainstream guys, Robert Schiller, uh, Nobel uh, Prize winning economist, you know, saying, hey, you know, something is very wrong. Um, they're, they're trying to, to, to warn people. Goldman Sachs, I mean, there's been warning too. Today, they came, just today, they came out again um, saying, hey, you know what, something is, uh, is going to happen reasonably soon. Look, these people have got to keep some type of a credibility going here, unlike the Federal Reserve which has lost all credibility here. They keep talking about raising rates. They know they can't do it. Um, so it's just so interesting here. I think they're going to have to resort to some very extreme measures. Again, here in the United States, just like the ECB buying corporate bonds, I think it's going to start happening here in the United States. I think we're going to see helicopter money. That's it. So I, I think we're very close to the end game here. How long will that go on? I don't know. I don't know. It, and it really doesn't matter because we need to understand that the longer this goes on, the more opportunity we're going to have to buy at these ridiculous prices with regard to uh, these inverse bubbles in gold and silver, platinum, palladium, 
stuff like that. Um, so I look at this and I just smile about it. I say, good, keep up, keep it, keep it going, keep propping this up. The correction is this because that's what it is is going to be epic. Um, so it just buys us some more time here to get ourselves in the right spot. Period. Now, is it safe to say, Greg? Uh, I can't really recall during the Great Depression how how the economy went, how the the stock went, but it seems to me it kind of rises really fast. Everyone gets deceived and then it kind of tanks out. Uh, like the rug is being pulled out, you know, out from under us. I think the Dow is something like at seventeen nine or eighteen, s- somewhere around there. Is that yep. fair? Is that fair to say? I mean, is that kind of, you know, along the same lines that you're saying? Absolutely, it's going to collapse so rapidly at one point, and the reason for that is it's multiple fold. But I would say if I had to pick one reason why the stock market meltdown is going to be very rapid, it would be margin debt. Margin debt is simply this. Uh, and we've never seen this before. It's historic. Um, people, institutions have borrowed huge sums of ca- sums of cash to participate in this engineered rally in the market. So when the market rolls, and it will roll, um, people can lose, institutions can lose many more times than their initial investment. So people will run for the hills. And who knows, at one point, there might not be any takers at one point. They'll take anything. Uh, They'll start selling this by dumping stock at what's called market orders. Uh, No person in their right mind would ever buy or sell a stock using a market order. When you use a market order, either on the buy side or the sell side, that means you're willing to take anything for your asset or buy whatever, and you're willing to pay anything for it. So you're going to see that there's not going to be any limit orders. It's all going to be uh, uh, market orders on the way down, which is going to be a self-fulfilling, uh, rolling uh, monster uh, downhill. Uh, and again, we've seen this before over and over and over again. You want to go back to the 1600s? Let's talk about tool of mania. We saw the same bubble pattern. They repeat over and over again. So I know there's a lot of guys out here, and I don't understand it, that say, hey, you know, it's going to be a slow burn. Really point to one time in history where a <laughs> bubble has burst slowly. I, I don't understand the, the the mentality of these kind of people, but there's a lot of people saying it. I cannot env- envision that's going to happen whatsoever. It's going to be rapid, very rapid. Unbelievable, and I am total agreement with you. Again, we need to get you back on uh, more consistently here. As the summer months move in, I think we're kind of arriving at a perfect storm, whether it's you know from the economic side of things. We, we see the current state of the U.S., uh, just rapidly digressing, if you will, gun grab going on, open borders. It seems a lot of animosity building up towards the elections. We could be building up for a perfect storm, and certainly the economic uh, side to it fits in perfectly. And uh, many of you who listen to Trad Cat Night know that we've been warning about you know the New World Order and basically their plan, and they've been on record. If you go to their website, shareinternational.org, they've said by the, this year's end, it will collapse. And these are the people who are behind pulling the strings. So... That's why I've been on record as saying, you know, I will be 100% surprised if this thing uh, doesn't tank, the stock market doesn't crash uh, in order to implement this one world socialist republic. So there you have it, uh, Greg Manorino. And again, traderschoice.net. Get to his Twitter page at Greg Manorino. Uh, I'll leave the last minute for you, sir, if you want to drop any of your latest works, articles. Uh, however you'd like to, to close this out, and then uh, I'll sign us off. Sure, absolutely. What I would urge people to do is, is go to my website. There's an absolutely free, and I mean free, there's no catches here. It's a 197-page ebook. The title of it is Ultimate Guide to Money in the Markets. Uh, download a copy of it. You'll have a better understanding of what is occurring, how this is going to play out. It's a little dated. I wrote it in uh, 2012. But all the premises still um, are valid. So go to my website, download a copy of it. Again, it's absolutely free. I don't ask for a thing. It's a 197-page ebook. Uh, take advantage of it. Uh, read it. Read it twice, three, four times. And I promise you, if you do that, you'll have a much better idea uh, of, of how this is going to unfold from a financial standpoint and, and how ugly it can actually get. Once again, I thank you, uh, Greg, and we'll get you back on certainly before the summer is over again. And this is this is something for us to keep our eye on. As uh, Greg has mentioned, who knows if it's going to be 
by today's end. Who knows if it's going to be in two months? Who knows if it will be by the end of 2016? They're just stringing this thing along, and who knows when this thing is just going to pop. And uh, as I think you've mentioned before, it's it's just all poison. Uh, it's it's all poison being uh, interjected into uh, this particular side of, of of what we've been talking about with the New World Order. And so, so my good friends, uh, make sure you get to Greg's website, link up to his uh, Twitter page, so you can catch all the latest information that he's putting out. And uh, until next time, stay safe and God bless.